This is the second part of the 15th video supplement for CIS 351, Grand Valley State University's course on computer organization and assembly language. In this video, we'll look at the propagation delay and running time of a carry lookahead adder. As a quick review, the main approach of a carry lookahead adder is to replace the ripple carry adder's chain of carries with a carry lookahead subcircuit for each full adder. That's these green boxes here. These carry lookahead subcircuits can all run in parallel which, as we'll soon see, is what allows the propagation delay to grow slower than big O of n. We know from video 14 that the full adders have a constant propagation delay. In other words, the propagation delay of an individual full adder does not depend on the size of the entire adder. Therefore, the big O growth rate of the overall propagation delay is determined by the growth rate of the green look-ahead subcircuits. The propagation delay for these circuits is not constant because the output depends on all of the adder's input bits. Therefore, as the adder grows, so does the propagation delay and size of the look-ahead subcircuits. Now, as you might imagine, the look-ahead subcircuits grow as you move from right to left because the circuits on the left consider more input bits. For example, C2 only needs to consider the first two bits of the A and B input whereas C7 must consider the first seven bits of A and the first seven bits of B. Actually, to be precise, they also need to consider the carry-in, which, remember, isn't shown in this diagram. Anyway, because the larger look-ahead subcircuits are on the left, the overall propagation delay will be determined by the leftmost look-ahead subcircuit. So let's analyze how the propagation delay of this subcircuit grows as the number of inputs grow. First, notice that all of the generate and propagate gates run in parallel. They all just depend directly on the input A and B. Therefore, they contribute at most one gate delay or a big O of one, a constant amount of time. Next, all of these gates also run in parallel. They all depend solely on the generate and propagate gates. The largest of these AND gates has about N inputs. Therefore, the time for this gate and the whole column, as a matter of fact, is big O of log n. Similarly, the OR gate has n inputs and a time of big O of log n. You put that all together and you see that the overall time for the leftmost carry logic is big O of log n. Now, because this is the slowest piece of all the components that run in parallel, when you put this together, you get an overall propagation delay that grows logarithmically. Now, as you know, you almost never get something for nothing. So do you have any guesses about what we give up in order to get the faster speed in this adder? We pay for this extra speed with size. The carry look-ahead adder is much bigger than the corresponding ripple carry adder. So let's look at the size of this carry look-ahead logic. First, there is one generate and one propagate gate for each bit of input and this contributes a total of big O of n gates. The largest AND gate in the largest carry-in block has big O of n inputs. Video 14 shows us then that if we build this out of two input gates as a tree, its size is big O of n. Now there are big O of n gates in this group, so when we combine those two, we get a total size of big O of n squared giving a total size for this subcircuit that's big O of n squared. Now, since there are n of these carry-in subcircuits, each of which is big O of n squared, we get a total size of big O of n cubed. Now, I'm hearing some objections that n cubed is way too big. After all, these AND gates get smaller as you move down the column, where the last AND gate only has two inputs. And likewise, the carry-in logic gets smaller as you move left to right, where the rightmost carry-in logic only has four gates in it total. So common sense should say that this shouldn't be that bad, right? All of those small components have to help us out somehow. Well, not exactly. Do you remember analyzing this particular code pattern when you first learned Big O? This nested loop where the inner loop starts at the outer loop's index? This is just the fundamental pattern inside the selection sort. The first time this inner loop runs, it runs n minus 1 times, and then the next time it's n minus 2, and then it's n minus 3, and so on, all the way down until it only runs one time. When you reverse this sequence, you're just adding up all the numbers from 1 to n minus 1. 
And so if you'll remember, the formula for that is just n minus 1 times n over 2, or n squared minus n over 2. So that is less than n squared, but it's still big O of n squared. It just differs by a constant. That same mathematical reasoning applies to the Cary look-ahead subcircuit, where although the AND gates keep getting smaller and the Cary look-ahead circuits themselves keep getting smaller, if you were to write a doubly nested loop to count all that up, you would still get a value that is big O of n cubed. It would be smaller than n cubed. It would be like 1 sixth n cubed, but still big O of n cubed. Now, of course, big O of n cubed is ridiculously expensive. But there are a couple of things we can do to mitigate that cost. First, notice that the large AND gates in each look-ahead subcircuit have a lot of redundancy. For example, consider the look-ahead logic for column 8. Notice the redundancy in this expression. For example, we compute the AND of P6 and P7 six times. Similarly, we compute the AND of P4 through P7 four times. If we build large AND gates as a tree of two input AND gates, as shown in video 14, then the rightmost product looks like this. Similarly, the next term to the left looks like this. Now, notice that both of these trees contain this subtree. The gates in both of these subtrees are doing the same work, so we don't really need them both. So we can combine them like this. This circuit has the same propagation delay, but uses fewer gates. Now, I don't know whether finding and eliminating this type of redundancy alone can change the big O growth rate, but it certainly allows us to make the circuit considerably smaller. Now, in the same way, there's also considerable redundancy among the different look-ahead subcircuits. Here, we see two different examples of redundancy, one highlighted in green and the other highlighted in orange. The challenge is how to leverage this redundancy to reduce size in a way that doesn't increase propagation delay. For example, if we try to leverage the larger greenish redundancy on the right, we can build this tree. But then to incorporate it in the logic for C7, we end up adding a gate delay. Likewise, we end up adding yet another gate delay going from C7 to C8. There's an entire class of adders called prefix adders that identify and leverage this redundancy in a way that keeps the growth rate of the propagation delay to log n. One of the best known prefix adders is called the Kaga Stone adder. Other prefix adders include the Brent Kung adder, the Han Carlson adder, and the Lynch Schwarzlander spanning tree adder. A thorough discussion of prefix adders would require an entire video, so I'll save that discussion for later. Before wrapping up, I will also mention that another approach for managing the size of a carry look-ahead adder is to realize that you don't have to put a carry look-ahead subcircuit on every full adder. For example, in this diagram here, we've only put carry look-ahead logic on the middle full adder. So this implementation will be almost twice as fast as the corresponding ripple carry adder because the left half and the right half of this adder can run in parallel. So that's not quite as fast as the carry look-ahead adder we've shown thus far, but it is a considerable improvement that uses much less hardware. Video 17 will discuss such hybrid approaches and the trade-off between size and time in much more detail. Based on both parts of this video, you should be able to sketch the carry-in logic for a carry look-ahead adder and be able to explain how this look-ahead logic works. You should also be able to explain why the adder, as designed in this video, that has a propagation delay that grows logarithmically and a size that grows cubically. In the next video, we'll look at a different approach to avoid the ripple carry. And then video 17 will look more closely at the trade-offs between size and time, and how we can combine the different designs to make the adder fast enough without letting it grow too large.